You know, but Pastor Dan, you're called by Jesus. And so <laughs> every one of us will be called, no matter what our name, Ronquilio. Uh, whatever, it's a good name, right? Love your name, because that's the name that God will call you. But remember, when we are going to, to heaven, we will have a new name. A new name written in our hearts. Jesus is calling us to proclaim to a dying world the second coming. Right now, the forces of evil, the forces of darkness, at this time, they're working so hard to unite the church and the state. They're working so hard in their agendas to, to persecute the true people of God because this is what happened in the first century of Christianity. And I would like to, I, I'm not here to, to cast fear or doubt in your, in your hearts. I'd like to tell you what the Bible is saying through the prophet of Daniel, through the prophet of, Reve, uh, through the, uh, prophecy of Revelation, that indeed we will be the people because we believe in Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. We are called the remaining people, the remnant. And we are called to go make disciples and proclaim. Tell people to repent and turn from their wicked ways because Jesus is coming again. <laughs> Jesus, friends, is coming again. You may not it may not resonate for now, but I believe in the heart, in my heart of hearts, in the in the deepest of bees or in the in the in the chambers of my of my heart's longing. That's why I served him. Even though I felt sometimes I'm not worthy. Or many times. We are called to proclaim the second coming. That's why we are called Seventh Day Adventist. Amen. To proclaim that Jesus is the hope of his second. Even Paul, Titus chapter 2, verse 13, he was looking forward, he was looking for the blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is, listen to how he wrote it. Great God. He acknowledged that Jesus is divine and Savior, Jesus Christ. He acknowledged Jesus as man. God is 100% God. Uh, Jesus is 100% God. And he's 100% man. The, the mystery of reincarnation. John 3.16 declares, for God to love the world. That he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, including me, but have everlasting life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I, and I love this verse, and I know you, you love, some of you here are familiar, the next verse that I'm going to show you tonight. This is found in John 14, 1 through 3. This is the divine promise, a divine promise that's not only given to an ordinary Ordinary relationship because the wordings, if you, if you understand the wordings of John 14, 1 to 3, this has an allusion to a, to a bride, write, uh, to a groom writing to a bride. This is a very intimate letter or, or writing. Not only to just an ordinary relationship, but this is a relationship that is deeper, that has a deeper love for each other. Jesus said to his love. To those who are waiting for him, let not your heart be troubled. It's like, it's like a soldier in Iraq writing to his fiancé in the United States. It's like, a, it's like a pen pal in the Philippines writing to somebody in the United States. It's a love letter. It is a very intimate letter because this letter cannot just be written by anybody without the heartbeat of loving. Also, romantic. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, I love that. Throughout my years, I have been renting apartments. I have been to one great uh, six-bedroom beautiful house, but it was not mine. I was, I was staying with a member in Claremont. It was a beautiful, in Strasbourg, Claremont. If you know Claremont, it's one of the uh, nice places that I've been to. And I stayed there, it was a beautiful mansion, six bedroom mansion. But the mansion that Jesus was telling to his loved brethren, to his loved people, in my father's house <clears throat> are many mansions. He was talking about heaven. Eyes have not seen, ears have not ears, 
is you. Or it came to the heart of man when God was prepared for those who are saved. And tonight, when you receive Jesus, you're saved. But our salvation will be complete. Fully complete. 100%. Right now we're saved. But when He comes, we are going to celebrate our salvation. Because we are going to be there. We're going to be there and see Him. And I said, Lord Jesus, I want my number 222. That's my mansion's number because I was born February 22. So 222. <laughs> that's, my number. that's the number of my mansion. And my, my, my wife will be 226. So we're just neighbors. Because she's there verse 26. <laughs> Lord, just reserve that number for me. Because I believe I will make it there. Because I will make it there not on my own. I am running. But I always fail. Fail when I run. I fall. Because you're running and take me with you. You know? If it were not so, if this is not true, I, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go... It's like a romantic lover. You know, when, when you have that time when you are... I remember and I recall the love letters that I've had from Australia to the Philippines. Oh boy, with all my letters, it has chocolate from Cadbury, Australia. <laughs> the best chocolates. And it has a teddy bear. And with the note, I love you very, very much. <laughs> with all my heart. <laughs> I will come again. And sure enough, I fulfilled my promise. Amen? Amen. At my appointed time, it was like, at my appointed time, I returned to the Philippines and married my, my fiance. Amen. And now, seven years down the road, happy and blessed. Amen. Amen. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where Jesus is that where I am, Jesus say, there you will be because you are loving. We have a loving relationship. You can only be there if you love one another. If you don't love Jesus and Jesus doesn't reply or response, you will not be there. Because not all who calls on Jesus will be saved. That's very clear in Matthew chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 25. The story was told. It was springtime. 1898. Maybe some of you here were born 1898. No, just, just kidding. 1898. I remember probably that time Jose Rizal was still in the Philippines, huh? A young, 18 years old, brilliant, bright man by the name of Douglas MacArthur, just recently passed the examination at West Point. And you know what West Point is, it's, the, it's the, the, the greatest military institution in the world, I would say, where the strategies and methods are being learned and they're being trained to be officers and gentlemen. So he just passed his examination in West Point. And then his father, Lieutenant Colonel Arthur MacArthur, was promoted to Brigadier General and he was assigned to the Philippines to free the Filipinos from 400 years of being bonded or bondage from the Spanish colonial rule. 400 years, that's why some of us could speak Cotsilia, uh, that's Spanish. La Mesa, that's Spanish. Si, si Senor, that's Spanish. <laughs> because we have been under the Spanish rule for 400 years. And so the Brigadier General recently promoted Arthur MacArthur was about to be shipped to the Philippines and when the, the son heard this, Father, I don't want to stay here and learn the books of war. I want to be in an actual war. I want to go there. I want to go there and join you and learn how to, how to free the Filipinos from the 400 years of, of being bondage. I, I remember when I read the story, the, the, the time when Moses is a great general, he's a great leader, when he was called by God. To free his people from the bondage of Egypt. And so General Arthur MacArthur said, Son, there will be many more wars. It's better for you to be trained and prepared in West Point. You're 18 years old, you're young, you stay here while I'll do the battle by myself there. And then the mother 
the wife of General Arthur MacArthur, said, your father is right. You should stay here. In order for you to become a good military officer and a gentleman, you should be in West Point. And I like how General uh, Douglas MacArthur, he was 18 years old, said, I think you're right, Dad. I'll just stay in West Point. And so his father was shipped to the, to the Philippines and he, and he fought the battles with the, with the, Sp with the uh, Spanish uh, soldiers and Spanish authorities. And when the time came for General Douglas MacArthur to free us from the Japanese rule, he, his words reverberate in my heart. He said, during the time when he was there and the, and the Spanish ar armadas are about, to, are about to take over and conquer Philippines, he said, Filipinos... I will come again. I shall return. I shall return. Those words reverberate into the hearts of those patriotic Filipinos because his words was fulfilled when he was, when he landed in Leyte, the club in Leyte, and freed the United States of Philippines. Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, United. Or Republic of the Philippines, excuse me. <clears throat> if General Douglas MacArthur promised that he shall return, how much more our Commander-in-Chief God? One out of 25 verses in the Bible talks directly about the second coming of Jesus. And tonight, friends, I want you to remember that Jesus is the reason why we are hoping against all odds, against all hopelessness in this world. There are so many hopeless situations in this world. Schools are, are not safe. Our society is in the upheavals, economic uncertainties, jobs are not, being, are, are not being replenished. Our young people have different, uh, different uh, uh, mindset. Our, our, our society is fast degenerating into <coughs> immorality. The last verse, which I will expand tomorrow, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you in law, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Emmanuel, that's the theme of the Gospel of Matthew. Emmanuel meaning God is with us. And God is trying to teach us using my voice to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey his teaching is better than sacrifice. At the time when he was hanging on the cross, when his last breath was about to was, was he, he was about to be he was about to give his last breath. The priests were preparing for the animal sacrifice as their tradition. They were trying to sacrifice, but they had forgotten that the Lamb of God, the Messiah, has come and was sacrificed on Mount Calvary. Friends, tonight, God does not really require us to sacrifice animals. He is the sacrifice. In so many passages in, in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 13, Jesus desired mercy, not sacrifice. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 7, Jesus desired mercy, not sacrifice. And I'd like to tell you tonight to obey is better than sacrifice. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I'd like to expand a little bit about what I'm going to say about the last verse. And so I would like to invite now Tracy. As we prayerfully contemplate what we are going to, to, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, after I leave. As we are about to uh, make, I'd like to make a final or I should say, an invitation again. I'm sorry, Tracy is uh, not going to say what Adderley will play. As Adderley will play. I want you to take out your decision cards. Every one of you have this. If you have been blessed, we would like to know. For those of you who don't have, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand up. Thank you for the 12 nights. Some of you here have been here for so many nights. Some of you here have just been here for three nights. 